Hello and welcome to uh, McUnhinged. Here we are. I always laugh. Once again, talking about talking about Captain America, the first Avenger. This is a podcast where we talk about the connections and recap and we do the swear chart. And it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a mixed bag of all kinds of segments here. <laughs> it Calling really your make podcast a mixed bag is a little bit, uh, <laughs> a little bit sus there, bud. <laughs> No, no, no! Mixed bag in a good way. It's a an entertaining bag. grab bag. I think is a better. <laughs> it's kind of a mystery box. You never. It's know. like a mystery <laughs> box of like no, Funko mystery boxes have potential you know? for bad shit. <laughs> I, I mean, I still think the comparison is apt. We watched Thor. I mean, we just watched this. I movie. mean, we, we, okay, we're, all right. We're we're okay. gonna watch Eternals, is what you should say. <laughs> hey, there. I fucking love Eternals, so I will fight. I will fight on that episode. That's gonna be a battlefield. Eternals hater has never seen Eternals. What's up? This is this is tragic. No, you're probably not gonna like it. A lot of people didn't like it. I'm alone. That, that's mostly I'm what the, I've heard. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the only one. I'm the one <laughs> hey, Eternals listen. fan. Hey, Everybody gets I one. Like the I'm movie. the Iron Man two fan. Okay, mm-hmm. I don't really have a leg to stand on here. Mm-hmm. So we're here talking about Captain America: The First Avenger. Unfortunately, as usual, we'll go over we'll go over the stats here. You know, came out in 2011. Has a runtime of two hours and four minutes, and boy, did I feel every second of it. Yep. Really? <laughs> yeah. Director, wow, okay. director Joe Johnston, mm-hmm. writers Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely, has a budget of $140 million, uh, made $370,569,774 in the worldwide box office. With a forty-seven point seven uh, domestic and fifty-two point three international split, has a seventy-nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes from critics and seventy-five percent from audiences. That seems fair. A six point nine on IMDb. Nice. And an eighty-three percent on Google. That's a high. That's fucking high. Google. Yeah. Every time Google the always, Google numbers are Google fucking there. weird. Yeah. Okay. Well, hang on. Let's jump right into the. You're talking about feeling. I actually, I was like, I got 30 minutes into the movie, and I was like, man, this is schmoving. Like, uh, I felt like the opening really moved. I will say, I do think uh, uh, after that, he rescues Bucky in the 107th up until up until like the final act when they like storm the compound or whatever. I think the movie gets a little lost there kind of meanders for a bit and you're like all right uh what's good we kind of have this weird montage sequence and stuff yeah I, I felt like the beginning of the movie really flew by i i was surprised how quickly he became captain america well the beginning has pretty good pacing up until honestly i would say about like when he gets the serum mm. and then as as soon as that hits up until he saves bucky is a lull that like I I I love enjoy that part. I love it so much. The best way I can describe this movie for me personally is a series of good moments padded out by World War II drama that I really could not give less of a shit about. See rewatches. Okay, I think that's what it is. I really enjoy the World War II setting. I think it really sets the film apart from the rest of the MCU. I think that's something I actually really enjoy. Uh, I really enjoy it in Eternals when Eternals does the flashbacks. I really liked Captain Marvel for this. I really like this movie. Uh, Guardians, when the movies leave modern day Earth, I feel because I feel like 90% of the movies are set in modern day Earth. Uh, yeah. I always find it very refreshing. I thought a lot of the settings, especially in like Brooklyn, uh, looked incredible. I really liked it. It felt like a lot of the backgrounds looked almost like paintings in a way that I really dug. Um, yeah, I, I think I think the World War II stuff is why I enjoy this movie a lot more than a lot of people do, just because it feels very refreshing to me from kind of everything else in Phase One, which is all set in this same same time period. That's understandable, and I I totally get that. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. like I fucking love Captain Marvel setting, and I love Guardian setting. It's just something about World War II for me yeah. <laughs> that, as a backdrop, is a lot less interesting. Yeah. Even I though you've got the like this whole dynamic, yeah, I think it's the least interesting of all the di- those different other ba- um, backdrops, like compared to Guardians or, or the '90s and Captain Marvel. But I, yeah, I think it. I it also is just like, like this is the only MCU movie where somebody punches Hitler in the face, and so like for me, that's. <laughs> 
and he does it repeatedly. So I, uh, uh, punches quote unquote Hitler. Yeah, he's, allegedly yeah, Hitler. Hitler. Yeah, but still, uh, no other this movie gets close. This isn't the Kingsman, right? Yeah. We're not. We're not seeing. <laughs> We're not getting the Hitler post credits, bro. What's the Kingsman <laughs> podcast? Let's fucking go. But but uh, like like, and I love that because it's a, a like I love that whole sequence there where he's doing the uh, the kind of propaganda machine stuff because it's acknowledging what Captain America was when he was created. Is c- when they created the character Captain Mar- Captain America was a hundred percent. America, like, oh, you, you, Yojo propaganda, you know, like, like, yeah, that is the very first issue of Captain America has him punching Hitler on the cover. <laughs> like, that's what they're recreating in, um, in, in this movie. Uh, so I, I, I enjoy, I enjoy that sequence because it then immediately goes into that that being like shattered when he's when he goes to perform in front of the troops and then we see steve rogers start to start that arc that we're going to see across this entire trilogy of like moving away from being the kind of patriotic yes man of the symbol of america and be more like uh, my country doesn't always make the great decisions like leaving these soldiers behind i'm going to go save them myself because that's the right thing to do um so that that is why I think that's part of why I like that that sequence of the of him performing and and just the that lull in between him taking the serum and and joining the action. No, I get you. I just don't like World War II. That's probably about <laughs> it. I mean, who does? Let's Especially be fucking now honest. I'm, now that I'm rewatching JoJo Part Two. Oof! Like, yeah, that's a that's a double dose. Where's the clackers at? at? Where are they at? <laughs> Bro, where's the where's the tequila cross dressing scene? Let's go! Come on. He could have snuck into that base easy if he crossed. I've never watched <laughs> JoJo, so I, you know, I'm just, I'll take your word for it. I, if nothing else, the scene with Joseph cross dressing is one of the funniest bits in that fucking show. I also watched this movie at like I don't know when I started it, but I finished it at like 5 a.m. So yeah, Oof. it's also pro- a, a big part of the reason. But I I knew that if why I do didn't you do watch this? it, why why do you why do you <laughs> why, you watched a movie that you already didn't like? At a time when it was just going to enhance the annoyance of the movie. And I just finished watching an episode of The Boys, which is like, oof, this is like really good. Wow, the tonal shift of going from Soldier Boy (laughs) to Captain America. I I, can't imagine that. Oh, I haven't even met him yet. Oh. I haven't watched The Boys. I'll be real. I I just see Amazon advertising it to me constantly. And I look at Jensen Ackles with that facial hair and I go, yes, thank you. (laughs) You you know how to target your ads, truly. (laughs) God, Amazon's marketing machine for that show is uh, terrifying. It's they're very good at it, know. and that's why it's scary. Yeah, it's like you guys are still. I mean, at least it's a good show that they're trying to market to me it in is... a way that's not annoying as hell. It's just a little funny to see like their marketing make fun of massive corporations, and I'm like, you guys are the massivest corporation. You know that, right? You yeah. Got, you got... <laughs> You know this is yeah. That's how they get you, Sean. Yeah, You're like man, yeah, they I gotta love be Amazon, hashtag dude. relatable, my guy. Yeah, if dude. they're not, what are they doing? Yeah, fuck, fuck big corporations, dude. Amazon, they have the right idea, <laughs> bro. When you when you get the Amazon targeted gets it. when you get the targeted ad on your Twitter feed, ugh, yeah. am I right? Yeah, yeah. Promoted by Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can talk about the movie now. Yeah. So, the movie starts in uh, present day ish. It's weird. Right? I it's a it's yeah. a hell of a cold open. It's a ch- oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. Okay, <laughs> I literally wrote time. that down in my notes. Let's fucking go. I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> uh, I gotta go. So so the, we have this uh, the search team leader right. He he's meeting up with some guys from Washington, and they found this giant ship in the middle of the Arctic. And so, you know, they climb inside and they find, like, they find Cap's frozen shield. And, you know, I mean, apparently he's in there too. And they're like, call, call the colonel or whatever, whoever they're calling. Like, it's 3 a.m., sir. I don't care what time it is. And then we cut over to Tonsburg, Germany. Hey, okay. Tonsburg, welcome back. So this, that opening scene you just described might be my biggest problem with the movie. 
And it's just the structure of this movie is so weird uh, at the beginning and end. Um, Because this should have been the final scene of the movie. And that whole scene where he wakes up in the hospital at the end should have been the post credit scene instead of an actual trailer for the movie Marvel's Avengers being the post credit scene, which was a... Well, considering the hype machine at the time, I Uh, get it. I I just think... I think it would have been better off if that scene... That was our cold open for this movie. Mm-hmm. Was the post credit scene of a different film? That would have worked too. I was thinking like you, you, you have them wipe away. You see the shield and then cut to black, and that's like, oh, well, well God, they found the shield, and then you can do the post credit scene of like, oh, look, he's fucking waking up, and Nick Fury's there, and he's like, I missed my date or whatever. I just opening the movie, regardless of where you moved this scene to, they should not have opened <laughs> with this scene. It's so out of place and weird like it it sucks out yeah. all the tension if no. if no if idea. this were modern like marvel we i would have preferred uh the post credit scene of thor to be or well, the mid credit scene to be uh the selvig stuff and then the post credits to be this yeah 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 but tonsberg germany 1942 we're back uh a man a man runs into some kind of church tombish kind of area and locks himself in. He warns some other guy, you know, that they're coming. Uh, the subtitles don't really say what they're saying. Uh, I checked a lot of different versions, and they just don't. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I opened, I was on Disney Plus. I opened up YouTube. I put in the fucking Blu-ray. <laughs> no, none of it. So, uh, but they bust down the the wall and kill that guy. And then they're in there looking for. Uh, they're trying to like open like a tomb. Like a like a coffin kind of, but they can't because they're not strong enough. Uh, but they're looking for the tesseract, and Mister Johann Schmidt comes in, played by uh, Hugo Weaving, uh, in his first and last time playing. Yeah, uh, he's not great in this movie. I mean, he's fine. The character is just kind of. Mm. It's it's fine for what it needs to be. Yeah. It, it is not yeah. the best written, but it's whatever. <laughs> uh, he'll he'll be replaced with the. Uh, What's his name? Marquand from The Walking Dead. He played Aaron in The Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he's looking for the Tesseract. He finds his cube in the in the tomb, and he's like, oh, close enough, but not really, because he breaks it. It's a fake. And then he looks over to a picture of, like, there's like a a mural on the wall carved out of stone. And it's like, it has the world tree on it, Yggdrasil. And he finds the world serpent, and he presses in his little eye. And in, the, in that compartment is the real Tesseract. Whoa! And he, and he calls it the uh, the Jewel of Odin's treasure room. And uh, then he, like, that guy, like, fucking, he kills that guy. But that guy's like, fool, you cannot control the power you hold, you will burn. And he goes, I already have. And just shoots him. Like just his little <laughs> face. His little fake face. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. It's, it's interesting to tie it back to Thor, but that's all I can really say about the scene. Yeah, <laughs> like it's, it's mostly interesting. Mostly whatever outside of that. Yeah, it's interesting to bring it back to Thor and make the Tesseract so linked to... to Thor. I, just, I, don't, I don't know if at one point there was a plan because we see very clearly at least two of the... Uh, of the uh, Infinity Stones are Thor related. I don't know if at one point yeah. there was a plan to make them all more Thor related, and they were gonna try and keep it a little bit smaller. But it, it obviously it's they impossible don't. to know at this point. Yeah, obviously they don't. But I do think it's interesting that they were they were tying it so heavily to Asgard and all that at this point. Well, yeah, that's that's the only off planet um, site that you can have the Infinity Stones kind of come from and. Unless you introduce sort a new of. place. Yeah, but they, yeah. they weren't going to do that until something like Guardians. Yeah, yeah. Which is yeah, so. which is what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah. So, we're in New York now. We get a scrawny Steve Rogers, played by Chris Evans' uh, CGI face, onto someone smaller than his, his muscular self. Uh, and he's trying to enlist in the military. Says his father died of mustard gas in the 107. His mom caught TB. Uh, and died, and Steve himself has, like, a number of health issues, including asthma, and just, like, he's just overall kind of a weak dude. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and he gets turned down, obviously. Yeah. They don't want they don't want that kind of guy in the military. Uh, so Steve goes to the movers and <sighs> and while they're watching like the military propaganda for the war, yep. a man's like shouting, he's like, yo, just play the cartoon already. <laughs> Which I wonder what they're watching. Probably, Probably something like Bambi or Snow White. Yeah. I actually think Bambi would have been in the exact right time frame for this. Let me Oh please like how moving yeah, castle. Yeah, Bambi's or... 42, so yeah. Bambi was 42, watching, yeah. yeah. So th- that would fit right Mugen in. Mugen Train? I don't think so. Bro, Mugen Train was <laughs> sick. <laughs> I don't think they're watching that. So, uh, the guy yells again, and Steve clearly steps over a line here, like, can you just shut up? And uh, then he gets his ass beat uh, <laughs> in an alleyway. <laughs> uh, and then he hit, you know, he picks up the... He picks up the the shield, no, the trash can lit as a shield, and uh, then I guess taken away pretty fast. But you know, he says the line. He says his his classic line: "I can do this all day." Boom, which is his classic catchphrase that belongs to him, and anyone who uses it should get their own. What, what, what was that? What, what was that, Tyler? I'm, I'm I'm talking to you, Peggy Carter. <laughs> we're not fucking, <laughs> we're not fucking covering what if. So, guess what? Fuck you, Peggy. Oh, Do, well, where'd you even learn that from? Okay. Where'd you learn it from? All right, well. Okay. Up until, up until that point. A little point. rude? <laughs> yeah, it is rude, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> up until that point, they kind of followed the same path until the she decided not to go up there. I don't know where she learned that catchphrase from. But uh, Bucky shows up. Sebastian Stan. Uh, dressed in all his military attire. God, it's so He's weird. Be a sergeant. It's so weird <laughs> to see him <laughs> looking like that. It's weird seeing him put together in a yeah. Marvel movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he can be a sergeant in the 107th, and he's shipping out to England first thing in the morning. And I hate to bring up my come girl romance again <laughs> for the second time Yo. in phase one. But the only thing I could think of was uh, The Ghost of You. Hell yeah. Good song, good music video. And he's taking Steve to the 1943 World Exposition of Tomorrow, a.k.a. Uh, the Stark Expo. It's pretty cool. Jenna Coleman is Netflix. there. Jenna Coleman is there. I lost my shit. I was like, I, I always, I always do. Whenever I see, whenever I see Clara there, I'm like, oh, Clara. It's just like, isn't, holy shit. Isn't it the lady that, that also plays like Star Lord's mom in the in Guardians? I don't 2? think so. I think she might be she- later in the movie. I don't think she's. No, yeah, yeah, on yeah, that no day. way, yeah, no. She's she's the lady. Uh, yeah, I think she's the one like in the bunker the where Hulk. Well, I'm... No, no, yeah, yeah. Star Wars mom gets the autograph when he's like walking down the stairs. Okay. The lady okay. Lorraine who kisses him is uh, um, in Game yes, of Thrones. Uh, okay, Marjorie yeah. Tyrell. Yes. I know. I recognized her also. I just didn't know from where. Uh, so Steve and Bucky go on his double date. And uh, on stage, we see Dominic Cooper playing uh, a younger version of Howard Stark. Very good Howard Stark. I very much enjoy him in the role. Yeah. And he pitches this flying car. It doesn't exactly work. He's like, I said, it'll be a couple years. And it makes it makes me wonder about how we get from this like like stage show kind of thing to his more like Walt Disney esque. It had to be a shift there for sure. Maybe just settling down with a wife, you know, really. Yeah, no more fond doing with uh, uh, random women yeah. at night. Either way, Steve does not care about getting pussy. He only cares about getting to the military. <laughs> yeah, uh, listen, it is bros before hoes the entire way for Steve Rogers. Oh my God, I just fucking, I almost <laughs> choked on my water. <laughs> you said it so nonchalantly. You just threw that out there. Yeah, hey. I mean the the enthusiasm is, enthusiasm is interesting. It's very um, uh, foreign to to kind of where we are right now, and that's because they haven't gone through Vietnam yet. Uh, <laughs> True. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm also just gonna drop it in the line. Uh, who needs to get coochie when you can get some Tucci? Uh, he meets her. Yeah! <laughs> Speaking of Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci uh... gang, Tucci gang. Abraham Erskine's here, also known as Joseph Reinstein, uh, as as noted in The Incredible Hulk. Uh, and he, he takes note of this conversation. 
And then we get to the line, don't do anything stupid until I get back. How can I? You're taking all the stupid with you. Mm -hmm. And it's actually kind of a sad send off because I think this is like the last time we see Bucky for a minute. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, happy, at least. <laughs> well, I think this is the yeah. last time we see Bucky happy ever. I mean, the last no, time we see him. No, because there, there is the like a cuter moment later oh, yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if Bucky's ever happy again after this. I think he's definitely like better than he is. Like, like he's really fucked up and traumatized he, by what he happens He is not later. at his lowest quite yet in yeah, this movie. No, no, no. But I don't think he ever reaches this high again of like not having been tortured ever. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, there's there's no way to untorture yeah, him. Exactly. So like, yeah, that sticks with him, yeah, obviously. Yeah, exactly. So uh, Steve waits in the enlistment, like check up room. He's told to wait there and he thinks he's in trouble for falsifying his forms yet again. But it's just Erskine there to talk to him, you know. Gives him like a little test, uh, where Steve says he doesn't like bullies. A little cringe, Steve. It, is it Erskine? Is it cringe, cringe to say that you don't like bullies? You could say it a better way. Mm. All right. Well, it's the forties, you know. I don't like bullies. Yeah. I I don't That's like why bullies. Why join the bully though. hunters? I don't like bullies, dude. All right. <laughs> I'll say it. Sean, you are a bully. Am I? So uh, up in the super secret Hydra Mountain base, uh, Schmidt and Armin Zola, Arnim Zola, I almost said Armin, Arnim Zola. They tease me with Modoc for the first time, and they will continue to do this over and over again in these movies. Modoc? Where do you get Modoc from? The fucking, his head in the fucking, when you see Zola for the first time, his fucking head is in that like glass, Zola's Modoc in the comics. Is yeah, it? and you see the fucking his face in the in the uh whatever. It, it's the very first shot of Zola in this movie is a reference to Modoc. And then we see Are it you again. Sure he's Modoc. Yes, he is. And then you see it again in um um you get it again in fucking what you would call it. Uh he does it again in Zola, Winter Soldier. Because Zola is a villain named Zola. Oh, I thought that was Modoc. No, he's not Modoc. Zola's a different. All right, well, guy. he looks exactly like Modoc. That's why I thought. Which is, that's what that's what he's teased. Because Modoc doesn't yeah. have like his face on the screen. Modoc's just like a big fucking head. Yeah, thing. Modoc is just sure? like he's got his massive, face in there, right? massive five no, head. That, that's a he's face. A There's a face head. in there. Not in a screen. Zola specifically has well, yeah, a, well, a head in a screen. I, I guess I, I do. I I do know everybody was referring to this scene as, as as Modok earlier because everybody thought that there was no way they were ever gonna actually do fucking real Modok. They would do it like through a head, a, a screen, or something. Yeah, but, for the MCU, that seems like yeah. the the best direction for them to take. But also, yeah, there is I, genuinely I really... no substitute for uh giant fucking forehead in a chair yeah, oh, yeah i mean that would be great i don't think we're ever gonna see that but uh yeah oh no i was wrong i really thought zola was uh was modok no he's zola man i've been like he to. uploads his like into a ai computer or whatever i've been lied Something to like for that. years i'm sorry um but they're doing some experiments with the tesseract and uh, Schmidt's looking at a bunch of, like, ancient images of the object's use. And uh, Schmidt kind of rushes the experiment, and it kind of kind of fucks it up a little bit. But they do end up collecting some energy from the Tesseract, which uh, he, he kind of pogs out a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Uh, but at Camp Lehigh, shout out to AvengerCon. Yo! Uh, the new recruits are greeted by Haley Atwell's Peggy Carter. Very uh, good. She comes in. One soldier uh, makes some some British jokes, uh, and catches like a sexual assault harassment charge. <laughs> yeah, uh, with assault, a punch in the harassment. fucking face, like yeah, yeah. he deserves. Okay, getting decked in the face. Good. Before before uh, Agent K shows up, A.K. Colonel Phillips, and uh, he gives a speech, but then hesitates when he says that they have the best men because he sees Steve's scrawny ass there. And then they give some some background on the Strategic Scientific Reserve, which is the place where they're like trying to find a candidate for the the new breed of super soldiers. Uh, and then you know they're running around. The their their task with like 
getting his flag off a pole and the guy's like, no one's ever gotten his flag in 17 years. And everyone gives up, but Steve just kind of like takes a little hinge out. And smart over. boy. He's a smart boy. Yeah. We need He's that. using his, his brain. brain. We need that. And then he just gets in the car. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they said. If you get well, the yeah, flag, you get the right yeah. Whoever gets yeah. the flag rides back with Agent Carter, yeah. and he did it. Yeah. Uh, and Colonel Phillips is like, he's like, I don't know. I didn't, I mean, I was a little weirded out when you brought Steve here, but I didn't think you'd pick him. And he suggested he should pick Hod instead. And he's like, oh, you wouldn't, you don't want war with niceness. You wouldn't war with guts. And he tosses a dummy grenade. And Steve's the only one who, like, tries to cover it up while everyone else, like, runs and hides. And uh, Colonel Phillips is just like, he's still skinny, though. Dude, Tommy Lee Jones is so fucking good in this movie. Yeah. I, I really like him as, as Phillips. I I think it's, everything that comes out of his mouth shines. <laughs> it's still insane to me, like, the level of casting here. Like, yeah. this movie has some of the best, like, side characters yeah. As far as who plays them. It's wild. Like, in all of Phase 1, I would say this is one of the strongest cast. Yeah. So, Earth Guy comes to talk to Steve. Steve asks him why he's chosen. And he tells a story about how Hitler chose him to make them strong, but he wasn't interested. So Hitler sent Smith. And Smith, like, injected himself with the, with the serum that wasn't complete. And he believed in the occult. Made him stronger, but really fucked up his face. Or well, maybe just his whole skin. I don't know exactly the extent of it. But he says the serum amplifies everything that is inside. So good becomes great, bad becomes worse. This is why you were chosen. Classic line. We'll, we'll be seeing that one again. And um, this probably this is like probably the first joke I've I've laughed at the entire movie. When he he pours the shot for Steve. He's like, wait, what am I doing? You have a procedure tomorrow. And Steve's like, well, we'll just drink it after. And he's like, no, I don't have a procedure tomorrow. Drink it after. I drink it now. <laughs> <laughs> that line is interesting because you do see it. it. It's interesting, and I like it because uh, you, thinking about it in the context of like Captain Marvel, which has a not a, which has a line that is not similar, that is very much the opposite of it, which. Uh, um, they say, uh, "Good isn't a thing you do. It's a oh no, good isn't who you are. It's a thing you do." So it's interesting, and I like the the Marvel universe has differing perspectives on 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 this kind of morality thing. Whereas like Earth's kind is just like, yeah, you're a good person, and so this serum is gonna make you even better because you're inherently good or whatever. And I I, I enjoy that. Back at the Hydra base, uh, Zola says, uh. That Schmidt found him. And then Zola sees like a bunch of pictures of like Erskine and Schmidt's already given the order to take him out. But I like that Schmidt's like entirely in silhouette this whole scene. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah. While he's getting his painting done. I like that the artist is uncomfortable at all times because he has yeah. to draw this man with his red fucking head. Uh, and then we'll go, we'll go back to New York. Steve is, is in the car with Peggy and he's talking about like how he got beat up all over town and calls her beautiful dame, but then corrects himself to a woman or an agent. And uh, he says, women aren't exactly lining up to dance with a guy they might step on. And uh, times are going to change, Steve. Just you wait. Yeah. Well, also, just you can tell that this movie was written by the same people that will go on to <clears throat> Capstone, the first saga of the MCU. Because I think of phase one, Maybe not Avengers, but but uh, at least so far of what we've covered, uh, this is the most relevant in terms of like like it's the easiest to track story arcs going back. I think from this movie, and I think part of that is because McFeely, uh, Marcus, and McFeely will go on to write the rest of the Captain America trilogy and Infinity War and Endgame. So they wrapped out all their story arcs from this movie, whereas they kind of picked up other characters story arcs and like continued from a different hand yeah yeah i can see that uh and here's also where we get our first mention of uh dancing yeah and that's uh and i'm already tired of it thank you what if okay well 
<laughs> this is going to be a long podcast. <laughs> Just overall. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm sandwiched in the middle, never having seen What If, never planning on watching What If, so I have no horse in this race, so these two are just going to be at each other's throats, and I'm on the sidelines just, like, A-posing. Tyler is letting What If ruin other good movies for him. <laughs> 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 okay. Tyler, you're like, you're like, I don't like the other movies now because of What If happened. <laughs> you're like, I don't want to hear about dancing anymore because of What If. Why does, why does she bring it up every five minutes? Every five minutes, Sean. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Just because you don't like it and what if doesn't mean it doesn't still work here. I don't know. Uh, but they head into the secret basement of the antique shop and prepare for Steve's procedure. Uh, Stark is here. And Earth kind of asks Peggy to move uh, up to the booth. Uh, and that's <laughs> in my notes. I said, good. We don't want Captain Carter on our hands. <laughs> I will not take this Captain Carter slander for another <laughs> second, Tyler. Anyway, it's time to inject you with the compound V. With the compound V. <laughs> <laughs> this was a diverging point in history, apparently. Okay, so I, I have a little story about, about this movie in particular and about this uh -huh. scene in particular. So there was one point. Because um, in, in, like, high school, I would watch a lot of these movies uh, just late at night whenever I needed to uh, chill and decompress. And so this movie is infamous in my household for putting anybody who watches it to sleep within half an hour. Which is why I was kind of dreading doing this rewatch. So I had to, like, have other stuff to occupy my time. And there was one specific instance of this where, like, yeah, I passed out in the first ten minutes. And I only woke up very briefly... As if on cue, when Steve popped out of the fucking pod and he was jacked as shit. It was the funniest thing. It's like my brain was just like, no, you gotta look at this. All right, pass the fuck out. Fair enough. We had the, we had the movie in our house, but it was called James Cameron's Avatar. God. Also fair. Somehow my house never bought the Blu-ray, even though we went to see it in theaters four times. I don't know. Four times? My mom was obsessed. <laughs> oh, my God. And then she, like everybody else, publicly forgot that it existed. Yeah. Just wait until the, uh, the new one, guys. It's going to be... Just wait. Yeah. It's, it's going to be great. Yeah. Just wait. I'm not. You know, I don't, I'm not sure about the second one. I think I'm all right with the third one. Four is going to suck, though. <laughs> five? Five is going to slap, dude. Five is going to bring it all back around. <laughs> Bro, when are we getting Avatar Phase 1? Don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> they wish they could do that. The Avatengers. James Cameron is the only one that wishes <laughs> he could do that. I, I guarantee nobody else at Disney is like, fuck yeah, dude, Avatar. Like, I'm sure they're all like, <laughs> we can't get Star Wars off the ground again, so just fucking do something. Hey, bro, what would win in a fight? A sword made out of vibranium or a sword made out of unobtainium? Oh, Which is stronger? Let us know in the comments. You can't obtain it. So the question is... Uh, I'm saying is hypothetically, if you, if you have a sword made of unobtainium, if you manage to obtain a sword made of this unobtainable material named unobtainium, would it be strong enough to beat a sword made out of vibranium? Here's the thing. Could a sword made of unobtainium kill Homelander? Question. Is that the thing? Is it's is a, that the thing that we were discussing? Like it's an it's a relevant question. Okay, I'll, I'll crunch the numbers. I'll, I'll... <laughs> we'll get back oh, to you on that audience. <laughs> so uh, the procedure is going pretty well, you know, until Steve just starts screaming, <laughs> and they get ready to shut it down. But Steve tells them to keep going, and at 100, percent the power kind of flickers, and Steve comes out finally in Chris Evans' body. This is a success. Because I was pretty worried, because there's like two more of these movies, and I was really hoping he it, it went well. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, were you worried that maybe he was going to stay small for an entire <laughs> movie, and like two more? I don't know. He didn't, he didn't look that big in, in like Civil War. I Are you? Just work, you know? Bro, <laughs> did you? What? God, move on. Move on. That's the stupidest thing you've ever said to me. I don't, I don't fucking know what's happening anymore. Holy shit. So Fred Clemson of the State Department is acting... What are you 
know his pretty, name. Why do you not sus. know? Why do you not know when he's gonna get jacked? But you know this character's name. <laughs> Sean, it was a bad bit. Okay. Anyways, Fred Clemson. Uh, he's pretty sus. Uh, because he's with Hydra, and he he like blows up the top booth for no reason. And then he steals like a vial of the serum and he shoots Erskine. He also shoots the old woman with the gun in the front of the store. And he escapes with his driver, but Peggy takes like a crazy shot yeah! and kills the driver. Let's fucking go, Peggy Carter, dude. You love to oh. see Peggy girl boss her way through the movie. Let's fucking go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all Peggy Carter. Then she like misses fans. the other shots. Because, because. Because because Steve ruined it. It's all Steve's fault, not Peggy's fault. I don't. I mean, Peggy she took Carter, she took like four shots before he got there. Peggy Carter. And he was getting we closer. We all stand so. Peggy Carter on this podcast. We all love her. We have zero problems with that. her in any universe. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> no comment. So uh, Steve gives chase, and now he's he's running pretty fast. He can't really control himself. He like crashes through a window. Uh, but none of that matters because I can only think about the fact that he's wearing fake feet in this scene. And he's running what? so fast. What? Yeah, he's running so fast. Don't worry about no, it. Fake fake feet. Feet. Don't worry I'm about so- it. <laughs> you you can't mention it. And then like when I think fake feet, I think of the Hobbit. Where like, yeah, yeah. it makes sense. Nobody's feet look like that. Because he's running on like, you know, like the ground, you know? You can't run on that yeah, yeah, yeah. with your regular he's wearing feet. Like, he's wearing like boots that look like feet. <laughs> with your regular feet, I said. <laughs> I'm... Okay. All right. I regret it's asking. It's really weird. I regret asking. Yeah, they're fake. Like, look at the behind the scenes and look at the prop. Here, here, here. Oh, here's here's an image. No. Here's an image. Why, why do we need here's an, an image? image. <laughs> I don't, I'm not asking for... I'm... Why? I gotta see it. Why? <laughs> Look at, his feet. Look at his feet in that. Yeah, I didn't ask for this. <laughs> I'm really putting the unhinged in Mac and Hinge this episode. I swear to God. Damn, look at those feet. Where do they rate on Wiki feet, do you think? No. <laughs> no. Tyler, please move on. I'll put the stats on your screen. I am I begging you. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying Chris Evans' feet. I'm saying specifically. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying yeah. move the fuck on, please. <laughs> Oh, so so oh, no. <laughs> Steve hops in the car and he's getting shot at, but he the car crashes eventually, and he picks up the door uh to block the bullets and it has a star on it. I wonder what that means. And uh, we see this. You know, this shot will show up in the Steve Rogers Museum later on, and we also see the person in the background who took the picture. Uh, and then like the the man like takes <laughs> sorry Fred Clemson uh takes. <laughs> Takes Why a kid hostage. Sorry, I, just, I, the, I looked at the picture again. And I, was like, I, I was like, man, his legs are so fucking lumpy. I'm so upset. Boots. I'm so upset because this is one of the funnier bits in this episode. It'll probably be the preview. Don't right. zoom in on the feet. <laughs> easy Motherfucker. The easy Don't the do that. Yeah, I wish I had it. Don't fucking show them to me. I swear. I'm going to post safe for work Sasuke to get the shit out of here. I don't care that it's not Marvel related. <laughs> so uh Fred takes this kid hostage and Steve is like sneaking around a corner and then he he throws the kid in the water after he runs out of bullets and Steve is like I got to I got to get the kid but the kid's like no go on go get him I can swim So uh, that's why relate. you don't like the movie Tyler cuz you can't swim <laughs> Respect to the kid who's just swim. like yeah I can swim get his ass Yeah <laughs> Truly Tyler, an American patriot so Steve, Tyler would have caused dives into the, the end water. Of the United yeah, States. Yeah, I would have been like, no, no, save me, save me. I can't well, swim, it's please. Well, a good thing Tyler wasn't alive in 1942. Let's yeah, fucking no, go. It's a really yeah, yeah. good thing that Tyler wasn't alive in 1942. Would Steve have saved me? I don't know. <laughs> I think he would have. What the? I, I know what you're doing. I think, but I, holy I, shit. I genuinely can't be entirely sure, but I think he would have. I would like to think. That exactly. this fictional paragon of justice would I'm not hoping. be racist. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Mm. <laughs> but Steve <laughs> jumps into the water and he pulls he pulls a guy out of this like crazy hydra sub. And uh then the guy hits the hell hydra and kills himself with the, the cyanide pill. This movie is pretty 
This was kind of graphic, actually. <laughs> this was it's later a on. World War Two film. What yeah, did you course. expect? Of course, but I mean, if they made a World War Two movie in the MCU now, it would not look like this, <laughs> unless Sam Raimi was directing it, of course. But I don't know about that. Like, I mean, they turn people into pink mist later on in the movie. Like, I don't think we're going to see, yeah. see that in a Marvel movie. Yeah, I, I, I looked at that and I, like, recoiled a little bit because I'm like, ooh, Marvel, what are you doing? <laughs> even even this dude, like, uh, d- taking the cyanide and frothing at the mouth, I was like, oh, God, that's a visual. Uh, so back in the Hydra base, uh, Schmidt claims that even though Hitler funds them in their research, he's basically been exiled because he doesn't strive for the Aryan perfection that Hitler does. He's like, I'm not a Nazi, okay? I'm just working. Yeah, we're like, better than the Nazis. It's like, all right, I ain't a racist. Hitler's just funding my research. Calm down. Calm it's like home- down. <laughs> it's like Homelander. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like Homelander when Stormfront says some fucking real out-of-pocket shit, and he, even he looks at her like, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> He's like, what? No. No. <laughs> not that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, but here we get the first name drop of the Red Skull, and uh, Smith basically formally defects from Hitler and kills the officer who show up uh, with the, like, they're like disintegration rays or whatever. I don't know what to call them, but Zola clearly hail Hydra's out of fear. So then, hmm? if they're being powered by the Tesseract, yeah. are they really vaporizing people, or is there a planet somewhere out in space where a bunch of Nazis have been deposited by the <laughs> weapons powered by the Tesseract? Well, I mean, there are soldiers there, too. And soldiers, so you know, like, just a, just a bunch of people that, that have been deposited on... That'd be a fun episode of What If? The Guardians stumble upon the planet where all of Can, the, all okay. the people from this movie have been. Here's here's positive. a cool What If idea. What if we stopped talking about What If? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be neat? Wouldn't that be interesting? I think we could call this so, podcast What If at this point. No. <laughs> <laughs> so they take blood uh, blood samples from Steve. And uh, we know this will be used uh, later on in things like the Hulk and Isaiah Bradley and other people. But on orders of the president, they're they're taking the fight to Hydra. Carter, Stark, and the rest are going to be flying to London. Steve, not so much. Uh, Philip wants an army, and Steve just isn't enough. So Senator Brandt promotes Steve to the most important battlefield of the war. Selling war bonds on the stage. And this is where to get his more comic accurate suit. He tours and takes pictures, and Star Spangled Man with a Plan plays. Great propaganda like scene. I like that song when it's played in Falcon and Winter Soldier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we get the Hitler punch. Mm-hmm. Only Marvel movie where Hitler gets punched. A shame. I know. Kind of it should happen more. It really. I wish, I wish Icarus punched Hitler. Oh, that'd be great. Literally, uh, you can you really call yourself a superhero if you haven't punched Hitler in the face? That's true. Captain America is the only superhero. You're right, All Shibuya. Right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So pull that back we, a little bit. We, like. we we end the montage in Italy to an unresponsive crowd of soldiers. Uh and they really hit Steve with the disrespect. Rightfully so, albeit kind of disrespectfully. No, they're right. And someone, someone, someone like shows them their ass, and <laughs> they get they're throwing tomatoes. I don't know where they get the tomatoes from. I don't know why. But they just but want the woman to come back out. The tomatoes is a, the I like the tomatoes part. Well, sure, why are you throwing tomatoes? Are, aren't so they stationed? Didn't it say they were stationed in like Italy? Yeah, yeah, this is in Italy. That's yeah. where they got the fucking tomatoes, I, dude. I guess, but it's like, man, you're gonna waste those tomatoes like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Why are you assholes. Why are you carrying a tomato? Just and also, worse than that. Are you prepared? It was this maybe that's all they had premeditated. To eat. <laughs> so uh, Steve Steve is kind of down. So he's sketching himself as a dancing monkey as Peggy shows up. She tells him that he was meant for more, and that some men of the 107th have been killed or captured in Azano. Uh, and Steve rushes to Phillips to see if Bucky's on the casualty list, but. Uh, Philip says that he he's sorry that Bucky's probably dead, and he doesn't plan on going to save or capture the soldiers. So Steve Steve's gonna do it himself. Uh, and then Peggy provided him with a plane that has Stark as the pilot. 
Uh, and then he jumped off the plane, and you forgot to, to mention the fondueing. The fondueing, yeah. The <sighs> man, Maria, come get your man, dude. Come on, <laughs> Maria, come, uh, pick him up. He's being a bitch again. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so back at the Hydra Lab, Schmidt tells Zola to increase production on Project Valkyrie by 60%. Uh, and then we see uh, some shots of the prisoners being held, which includes Dum Dum Dugan. Sneeze sneaks onto the base uh, on the back of a truck and gets him with like a lot of running and punching. He's not super stealthy, but no one seems to notice. Uh, and he takes a vial of the, the Tesseract energy uh, to be looked at later while he looks for prisoners. He finds them, and uh, Dugan, Dugan's like, we're taking everybody? And Jim's like, I'm from Fresno. <laughs> God. Yeah, just some casual racism from the, from the, from, uh, what's his name? Abraham in uh, The Walking Dead. That's Abraham? Yeah, isn't it? I don't know. No, it's not. I, I'd have to look I don't think it is. is. No, no, that's, hey, um. Hey, is, is life emulating art right now? Are it's, we assuming somebody is somebody they're not? Yeah, I yeah. am. I'm assuming that the white guy looks like a different <laughs> white guy. No, he's Damien yeah. Dark is what I was thinking of um, okay. in uh, the CW-verse. That's where I've seen him. I knew I saw him somewhere else, and I was like, it's Walking Dead, right? But no, he's just another redhead. He, he goes to look for Bucky in an isolation ward while Smit starts setting what, what are self-destruct timers. Uh, Steve and finds Bucky. And and who's strapped to a table and gets them out of there while while uh looking at like the map of all the other bases. Before they get out, uh him and Schmidt have a confrontation on the like a little bridge walkway. The face looks really good. And, and then Schmidt takes off his, his fake face and shows a red skull underneath. It looks I think and, I think it looks the makeup looks really good on that or CGI, whatever it is, I don't know. I don't know the yeah. behind the scenes, but I think it looks real good. It still holds up. Yeah. Uh, and then Red Skull takes like a plane that's up top while uh, Zola takes the car. Uh, Steve and Bucky try to make it across the beam, but it falls after Bucky gets across. And while this is happening, Phillips drafts up like a, a KIA letter for Steve. And then Rupperman's Pan- Peggy. Who's Pandy? Uh, well, you know, everyone gets out. They they steal a bunch of, bunch of vehicles and guns and shit. Uh, but as he's as he's getting to think of the thick of his like his recommendation, uh, there's a bunch of stuff going on outside, and they go see and it's Steve and everyone else marching into camp. Let's hear it for Captain America. Uh, so at some point Steve's supposed to to get this like Medal of Valor, but he didn't show up. Stan Lee's there. Uh, and says, I, I thought he'd be taller when the little aide comes out. Uh, underneath London, uh, Steve is, uh, tells them where all, all the Hydra weapons factories were. Uh, based on what he saw on the map, and we get, uh, I mean, Lorraine's here. And Steve tells him that he's putting a team together. The Howling Commandos, which features Dum Dum Dugan, Jim Morita, Jim Morita uh-huh. fucking Bucky, and everyone else grandfather of fucking peter's principal yeah, yeah jim um uh, played by the same actor too yeah well that's why they made him the grandfather because people were like hey that's the same guy uh so while they're at the bar peggy walks in in like the loudest red dress i could have ever seen <laughs> and tells steve that stark has some stuff he wants him to try out tomorrow Bucky tries to put the moves on her but she is basically staring right into steve's soul <laughs> and doesn't look at Bucky at all. Uh, Stark is looking into the that cartridge that Steve had, and he grabs like a little particle out of it, and kind of writes it off, but it blows up in his in his <laughs> metaphorical face. Sounds right. Uh, and he says, "Write that." And he says, "Write that down." <laughs> Peepo notes. Peepo notes. Peepo notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I really like the. Uh... Yeah, I I just I really like Steve and Peggy in this movie. Uh, for in that even in that last scene, I think uh, I don't think they are quite as good as um, Tony and Pepper throughout the Iron Man movies and the Avengers and all that. But I do think they're one of the stronger. Uh, well, the dynamics are are very different between. They those are, two. yeah, yeah. But I, I just but, mean in terms of 
like chemistry. I feel like Chris Evans and Haley Atwell are, uh, do a very good job compared to some other uh, Marvel love interests that maybe I don't mean, click. We'll get to that in phase two, I assume. I think yeah, I know exactly which one you're bringing up. I'm not even like making like a Sharon. specific... <laughs> specific. I just think that there's a lot of love interests in the earlier Marvel movies that are like, eh, I don't know uh, if this is working. Oh, fair. Fair point. I, I was just thinking of the obvious one that they didn't set up at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no. then they, they just do, do it, it later on as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Steve comes in to meet Stark and gets the moves put on him by Lorraine until Peggy interrupts them. Marjorie Tyrell. Classic, classic writing technique, you know, create some romantic drama before the relationship even starts. Peggy's mad. You weren't dating. Uh, the moment you think you know what's going on in a woman's head is the moment your goose is truly cooked, says Mr. Howard Stark. Some casual sexism. Yeah, it was the 40s, all right. Yep. It was the 40s. Uh, Howard gives Steve some new armor and uh, shows him a bunch of new shields, but Steve picks up the prototype vibranium shield. Uh, completely vibration resistant, which is why, it, uh, which is probably why it bounces so well. But uh, But that's all the vibranium they have. Yeah, Which, uh, like the question of where they got it. Doesn't but... he mention Wakanda? No, I no. thought he mentioned that that was all they were able to get out of Wakanda. I guess not. Okay, I guess the first time they mentioned no. is Age of Ultron. Then, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Peggy, still mad, fires a gun uh, at the shield in its underground bunker place. Uh, love it. Uh, Great. Probably sequence. the worst thing you could do. Yeah, but it's really funny. I don't know why she's mad. It's very good. It's very good. Uh, it's a very good moment. It really works. <laughs> uh, but now, now Captain is in uniform, and the Helen Commandos start taking down Hydra factories. It's a montage, baby. He's like he hitting people with shields and motorcycle jumps. We get the first shield throw. Uh, Red Skull's fucking angry. He's mad. Uh, and Steve has a picture of, of Peggy and his compass, which I I guess they reconciled at this point. Even if it's not like reconciled, a, it's, it's just like, yeah, pining. I'm going to war, so like, I might as well have a photo of yeah. who I'm fighting for, you know? A little bit of pining from afar. Um, I like this action montage. I kind of want more of this kind of thing from superhero movies. I like the sequence in Homecoming, where Peter just solves a bunch of crimes, like little minor... Not even really crimes. He just helps some people out. Uh, I, I'd i like it more in superhero movies if towards the beginning we had a little sequence where we saw the superhero do everyday superheroing before we jump into the end of the world threat. I think that's fun. Do you? Yeah, I do. I do, Tyler. And I'm tired of pretending that I don't. Were you ever pretending that you didn't? And no, I wasn't. I just wanted to say that because it's like, you know, it's a line. Okay. You know, it's very cliche, but, you know. No, I, I, I get you. So, sometimes you just want to get it out there, even if it doesn't apply to the situation. Yeah. Oh, I do that all the time. I will force my jokes in wherever wherever I can see an opening. I will shove that square through the circle hole. You mean circle through the square hole? Yes. That's right. The square hole. <laughs> that video's too I'm not good. very smart either, okay? Right, it's it's all right. It's all right. We make up for each other's weaknesses on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, I thought Modoc was Zola. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not yeah. very smart. <laughs> so uh, up in the mountains, they're getting ready to ambush a train that Zola should be on. Uh, but it's a trap as Cap and Bucky get separated into different train cars with soldiers uh, with what I just call the mega guns. Uh uh, but Cap Cap kind of beats his guy and helps Bucky out. But the big guy gets back up and blasts Cap, uh, knocking him down. Bucky grabs his shield to block the next shot. Gets blown out of the train, but he's don't worry, he's hanging on. Just kidding, he fell. And we will never uh, see Bucky again, right? Never, Rest in peace, again. James Buchanan Barnes. We hardly knew ye. I I do think this is probably in terms of like telling a, a consistent story across three movies, probably the best trilogy in the MCU. Cause like, I feel like the stuff set up in this movie carries over very well. And at no point across these three movies, do I feel like it goes, forget the last one. Actually, we're doing something different. I mean, I kind of, yeah, 
At I, least I the mean, most I, consistent, if maybe not like your favorite of the of the obviously. But no, like, I'm 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 just thinking yeah. about like some of the characterization uh, near the end of this trilogy, and like I might slightly disagree, but it is some of the most like consistent character motives throughout, at the very least. I was I was watching the beginning of this movie, and when he's like, "Hey, I'm not gonna wait." on this whatever you told me that he's dead i don't care i'm still or i'm not gonna wait for them to mount a rescue mission i'm just gonna go do it myself right now and i thought i was like oh yeah that's very consistent with how he acts in civil war i was like yeah "Yeah." i i i i I do feel like i feel like steve is pretty consistent in this movie with how he'll act later on okay yeah fair point oh the rescue mission uh let's see so uh but you know what's really important about Bucky Fallen? He makes a very essential piece of his of his theme later on. Good job, Bucky. Uh, they capture Zola and interrogate him. Uh, and Philip theorizes that Zola wants to live because he didn't take one of those pills. Uh, gives him a way out. Uh, and Zola says his smith's target is the whole world. Uh, and then we get a shot of the large uh like V ship that uh Schmidt has. Uh, Peggy goes to destroy remains of the bar that they were in earlier, and Steve is there, and he, you know, he says that he can't get drunk, and blames himself for Bucky's death, and she's like, you know, don't blame yourself, it wasn't your fault, stuff like that. Uh, Phillips and the rest of the squad uh, try to think of a battle plan uh, using the info they got from Zola, uh, and they need to go to the Alps. Uh, and they have to go right through Schmidt's door. So Steve, Steve kind of <laughs> rushes in. He just souls everyone from his bike and then like gets off and then gets captured. Uh, and Ruskell's there and he's monologuing, but uh, and he gets kind of mad when Steve was like, "I'm just a kid from I'm just a kid from Brooklyn." Uh, because he's not he said he's nothing special, but this is all part of Steve. This is all part of the plan. It's a trap. Alan Commandos come through the window. Yeah, and watch the fools. Well, it's a full assault in the base, and I mean, it, even Phelps is here. I mean, everyone's here, fucking. I love that. I I do call a little bit of bullshit on that. When those are really just normal windows, that's like that's like his room. Those aren't like reinforced at all or anything. They're able to just no, those, kick them out. It's a nineteen, it's a nineteen forties, dude. I guess. I, did, did, did they not have any sort of reinforced windows in the forties? Probably anything, the fuck not. Anything stronger Probably than not. being able to just kick it out? Probably no. the fuck not. So, uh, Cap chases the Red Skull, uh, around his place, and the Red, the Red Skull hops in the airship and, and sets it for New York. Uh, Steve can't catch up while he's, while he's on foot, but Phillips and Peggy pull up in his car and, uh, get him on there. Peggy gives him the kiss, and I like that Phillips is like, I'm not kissing you. Yeah. Uh, on the ship, Steve sees these... Are they missiles? Are they sh- missile ships? I don't know what they are exactly. Uh, but they have labels for New York, Chicago, and Boston on them. He fights a bunch of dudes, throws people out of the airship. He falls into one of them as it like takes off. But he pulls the guy out, flies it back onto the ship. And this is where the guy gets shredded in the in the mist. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucked. Uh, and then he confronts the Red Skull in a fight. Uh, Red Skull says... You could have the power of gods, yet you wear a flag on your chest and think you fight a battle of nations. Uh, and eventually Cap uh, like throws a shield at Red Skull and it breaks the machine. So Red Skull grabs the, the Tesseract and it kind of warps him out of there. Oh, and it's... It looks like it kills him, but... It's, it's showing the... It's showing space when it's happening. I wonder what happens. I, I feel like people... I feel like nobody online ever believed that Red Skull was really dead. I feel like I always saw people being like, yeah, he's fucking somewhere out there with the space stone. Like, I'll be real, I never saw sh- speculation about Red Skull at all. Really? Yeah. I maybe I was like just I, in the on the wrong places in the internet in like 2011, but like, maybe people were just sort of like, yeah, sure, he's gone. Yeah, maybe not 2011. Maybe it was only after they confirmed that that was an Infinity Stone. That I saw people start to go like, Maybe. well, then he probably wasn't like fucking killed by it because it showed like the cosmos. When I still didn't see activated. people speculating like at really? all. Most people I knew actually like when they ended up watching uh, Infinity War Endgame were just like, 
what the fuck? Why is he here? What the fuck? What the fuck? That was like the general consensus that I was seeing online. Oh, wow. Well. Uh, and it, it leaves the Tesseract behind and it melts to the, the floor of the ship. Uh, Cap calls the base and he reaches Peggy and he plans to put the ship in the water because uh, it's the only way. He tells Peggy that it's his choice as he puts the, her picture on the console says, I'm going to need a rain check on that dance. And then he crashes the plane as the radio goes out, and the ship sinks uh, deeper into the ice. V Day happens. The wars, the wars won. Uh, and the soldiers, like they, you know, do a toast for Steve. Howard's out there searching. They find a tesseract, but Howard doesn't keep looking. Peggy gets that photo of King C that we'll see in 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 game. Uh, and even even though he's gone, Captain America has uh, inspired a, a lot of others. You see kids running around with like trash can shields and all kinds of stuff. I love that. I just love it when heroes inspire people. I love shots like that. It is very sweet. What a cornball, dude! All right, well, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, Steve wakes up uh, to a baseball game on the radio. And a woman walks in and greets Steve. And uh, he asks her where she is. And she says New York. And he's like, but where am I really? Because that game is on the radio. I was there. I was at that game. Uh, and it's kind of fucked up to keep him in an air accurate room. But he, he breaks out and runs into uh, into New York. Uh, modern day New York. And... Uh, standing in Times Square to meet him after a bunch of cars pull up is uh, Mr. Nick Fury. Yo! And Fury tells him that he's been asleep for almost 70 years. Uh, and Cap is a little sad because he missed his date. Roll credits. Uh, and then post credits, Steve is like boxing in the gym and he like, punches a heavy bag off the chain. And Nick Fury comes in to give Steve a mission to save the world. And then we just get a trailer for the Avengers. Uh. I hate I I didn't like it in No Way Home. I don't like it here. I don't like it when they just put trailers at the end for post credit scenes. Yeah. I I get it. I get why. Uh, not a fan personally. It it when it first is in theaters and comes out, it's kind of cool. And then it ages like fucking milk. Yeah. Yeah, cuz then you watch No Way Home again and you get there and you're like, "Oh yeah, I, I fucking hated that movie." <laughs> See you guys in two years for Multiverse of Madness. No. I can't wait. I can't wait to openly shit on Multiverse of Madness. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing it's going to be so long from now because it's it's dangerous to do it now. Uh, but that's it. That's the movie. That is the movie. Uh, how do you feel about it? Sure is. Uh, I really, really love this movie still. I didn't love it as much this time as I have previous times. Uh, I think it's got a lot of problems. I th- I still think it's one of the better phase one movies. Uh, I don't know if we're doing our, uh, we're not. Okay. But yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I really like this movie. Okay. Shibuya? I think it's for what it is. It's pretty good. Um, I, I have my personal issues with it, but it's not a bad film by any means. It's just a little less interesting to me than some of the other MCU concepts. That's it. Okay. I thought it was okay. <gasps> you know. Like, I mean, it's all like pretty dog shit, but I, I'm not a fan of the montages, really. Uh, yeah, it's really weird looking at Skinny Steve. I'm just so happy uh, you said that, okay. I, I, that's a victory for me. <laughs> <laughs> but still, in in the greater MCU... It's going to be pretty low on that list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it, it's probably going to end up pretty, pretty far down there. I wouldn't be surprised. But, uh, yeah. So let's talk about the connections. Because I did most of this 15 minutes before we started, <laughs> uh, I don't have a lot of it made. So it's going to be there when, you know, in the, in the video. But That's fine. For now, of course, we got Tonsberry that we've seen in Thor. We got the Tesseract that we saw in the post-credits for Thor, as well as in Howard's Notebook and Iron Man 2. Schmidt mentions uh, Odin and the Treasure Room. 
We get the Stark Expo. We get Howard Stark. We get Dr. Erskine and the Super Soldier Serum, referencing the Hulk. And, of course, Nick Fury is here. Uh, and, of course, this is not a direct sequel to anything. References basically, basically every movie that came before it. Uh, I forget to mention The Shield and going back to Iron Man 1 and stuff like that. Uh... But yeah, so it's going to connect to everything uh, on the big board as well. And then let me pull up the chart for, for, uh, language. Where is it? This is the worst part of today. There we go. Because I had to make it bigger. Wow. So, oh my god. Uh, I'm stunned. Cap into the, the language section here. Captain America, the first Avenger, has 16 soft swears and one hard swear. Most of these are brought to you by Colonel Phillips and Steve Rogers. So, at uh, 142, the search team leader says... You guys are going to need one hell of a crane. At 2027, Colin Phillips says, get your ass up out of that dirt and stand in line at attention till someone comes tells you what to do. I've never considered how long this segment is going to go when you have something like 16 <laughs> soft swears in it. And as you started refer referencing them all, I was like, oh God. Hey dude, it's all right. No, you drink your water. It. I'm excited. So, so at 2129, Colonel Phillips says, and they will personally escort Adolf Hitler to the gates of hell. At 23 minutes, even, Colonel Phillips says, When you brought a 90-pound asthmatic onto my army base, I let it slide. I thought, what the hell? Maybe he'd be useful to you, like a gerbil. Uh, at 37.16, Colonel Phillips says, The son of a bitch did it. At 42.34, Steve Rogers says, Who the hell are you? At 53.16, Steve Rogers says, they look like they've been through hell. At 56.54, Steve Rogers says, As soon as I'm clear, you turn this thing around and get the hell out of here. And then at 57 minutes, Steve Rogers says, The hell I can't. I'm Captain America. I'm oh, sorry, I'm a captain. He didn't say Captain America. Uh, at one hour, one minute, and ten seconds, Steve Rogers says, Get out fast and give him hell. At 108.26, Steve Rogers says, Hell. Right before he makes the jump. Uh, at 109.33, Colonel Phillips says, What makes you think I give a damn about your opinions? Uh, and at 109.53, Colonel Phillips says, What the hell's going on out there? Uh, at 113.06, Colonel Phillips says, We're going to set a fire under Johann Smith's ass. At 113.48, Dum Dum Dugan says, Hell, I'll always fight, but you gotta do one thing for me. At one fourteen nineteen, Bucky says, "Hell no." <laughs> and I, I don't know that why that one got me. <laughs> no, 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 because <laughs> everything else has been part of like a massive sentence, yeah. and then this was just like, "Hell no." Uh, and then at one thirty fifty one, Peggy Carter says, "He damn well must have thought you were worth it," and that's it. Had to had to retool the whole the whole thing. Do you think we're ever gonna get past sixteen? That's a lot. I fucking hope not. I, <laughs> I really, hey, I really don't want to. Hey, I I think we might get past sixteen at a certain point. Oh no, I can't I can't pinpoint when, but I feel like one of these is gonna go over twenty with the soft swears. Oh no, God please. Well, when we cover Deadpool three in the MCU. Bro. Yeah. Okay. That's gonna, <laughs> I don't know. That's that's probably gonna take it way over with the, with the hard switch. Yeah, yeah that that one, don't even change it, just have the dot leave the fucking graph altogether. There's gonna be a bonus episode where you read every soul <laughs> where in the movie. <laughs> it's just you reciting the script. Exclusive content. All of the Deadpool swears. Oh, maybe maybe once we get to phase two, I'll just start. I'll just start 
Oh, I'll, I'll test out putting just the clips in there. That way I don't have to read it. But we'll see how that goes. Cause, you yeah, know I don't know if that'd be I'll easier. I like just reading it frankly. is whatever. It's fine. Yeah. It depends, you know. I guess if it gets... Sometimes you don't get the, sometimes you don't get the full effect. That's you know? true. But sometimes it's funnier like the hell no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just a random <laughs> hell no in the middle really got me. But uh, that's it for language. So let's let's talk about our rankings of the movies. Who wants to go first? Uh, I'll go first. I uh, put this movie at number two. Uh, really enjoy this movie. I don't think it's as good as Iron Man 1, but I, I put it above uh, Thor, Iron Man 2, and The Incredible Hulk. Okay. Interesting. What are you, um, I actually put it fourth. It's interesting how different, uh, Sean, in my opinion, of this movie is. Because I think this movie, this is one of the ones that holds up maybe the worst on a rewatch. At mm. least for me. Just because I think, like, when you're first in it, even if you know the Captain America lore, seeing him go through all this shit for the first time, uh, like, it, it is very engaging and it does get to you. And then coming back to this after having seen his entire trilogy and after having seen everything, it's just like, all right, can we please get on with it? Can we skip the montages and just get Johann Schmidt out of the way, please? I'm, I'm so, like, I'm done with this fucker. So I'm not entirely shocked that it's below Iron Man 1 and 2. I mean, well, yeah, that's on. sort of my well, thing. But so. what's the other one that it's underneath? That's what Thor. I meant. Thor. Oh. I, th I think just barely Thor edges this out. Interesting. Okay. It, like, it's not a super low rating. I, I rated it, yeah. like, 6.5 or 7. Okay, yeah. Like, yeah. I'll, I can go between it. It's not a it's not a poorly put together film. It's just not yeah. a film for me where I'm going to go I'm... out of my way to watch it again. Yeah. Uh, as for me, uh, I would rank it fourth underneath Thor and above the Incredible Hulk. Okay. Uh... For most of most of the same reasons should be said. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, top five. Yeah. <laughs> For now. <laughs> <laughs> top five. He says when we've done five movies. <laughs> yeah. I'm very excited for next time. Next time is gonna be interesting because I feel like this is one of the ones where it'll be like love it or hate it on a rewatch. Yeah. I. Uh, it's gonna be. I mean, part of it is it was written and directed by Joss Whedon. Unfortunately, so yeah. That kind of puts a filter over everything now. Well, I'm I'm gonna try and do my best to yes. separate yes. the the film from the person behind it. Of course. Cause like I I have very vivid memories of when this first came out and how big of a fucking deal it was. Oh, and of course. We're like ten years out from this shit, so I'm I'm curious. Yeah, I'm I'm curious to see how some of the writing around characters like Black Widow might uh, feel different now, just yeah. with context of who's writing it. You know what I'm saying? Not yeah, I even, get you. Not even so much that there is any actual change, but just like wondering more, like is how did he approach this? You know? Okay. Well. That's gonna do it for for us. Unless anyone has anything else they want to say before we before we get out of here. Uh, Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci gang. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sean, uh, where can everyone find you? Uh, on Twitter at Sean underscore AFK. Everything that I do, I hit the retweet button. You can see it there. All right, Shibuya. Uh, YouTube or Twitter, uh, just Shibuya Gato. You know, I post all the stuff I got going on there, and uh, I make some stuff sometimes. So if you're interested, there it is. And as for me, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch at Tyler Tyler Rooms. And for this podcast, you can follow McUnhinged on Twitter at MC Unhinged. You can also find us on Anchor at anchor.fm forward slash MCU dash unhinged. You can also find us on Spotify, Google Podcasts. Uh, and also, if, uh, if we're not in a place that you listen to, 
Come over to the Anchor page, copy that RSS feed, plug it into your podcast app of choice, and we will pop up there regularly for you. But next time we'll be covering 2012's The Avengers. Everyone comes together. All, all, all of them come together. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. Bye. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to think of something to say. Meanwhile, Sean just comes out with the <laughs> okay, I, guess, I guess we're leaving now. I don't, I don't have anything else. I was hoping you had, hoping you had some like. I'm, I'm trying Avengers, to come up with something. Or... No, I'm... the Avengers, dude. They're gonna throw the shields at the. I, I am excited for Cap to call it. To be honest, I, that's yo, is that Nick motherfucking Fury? All right, that's, that's all I got. He's uh, been in every fucking movie. Who cares? Uh, call it Tyler. <laughs> How's that? I don't even remember what. I don't even know what you're referencing. When, 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 when Tony's like, call a cap, and then Cap does the big thing. He's like, I want you on the rooftop, and you go over there, and cops, whatever, do that. But I, but you're the you're the captain of this boat. So. All right, hold on, hold on, the audience, smash that like button and that subscribe button. All right, I'm gonna go. I'll. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'll like, see I'm you sorry. guys for. Uh, Do you for have a better idea? <laughs> no, I don't fucking I don't. think so. <laughs> I don't. The only thing better than the Avengers is Rage Shadow Legends. <laughs> <laughs> Play Top War on iOS. We are under fucking attack by bad bits. Look, everybody's got to have a bad bit sometimes, okay? Now, I know that not everything can be a banger, but, like, this one's fucking dire. <laughs> yeah, this one is pretty consistent. I don't know how much of this is actually going to make the final cut, to be honest with you. <laughs> Tyler's going to leave it in just so everybody can listen to us flounder. Yeah. Like Honestly, I think a, a lot... I think a lot of comedy just comes from failure. L nothing is funnier than listening to people try and fail to make something funny. Because they fuck up so bad. Yeah, I'm. I that's why I'm so funny because I'm a complete failure at everything I do. All right, well, shit, that's just <laughs> so that's just self depreciation, <laughs> man. <laughs> Tyler, can I stop recording yet, or we, is there still a bit we need to do? I stopped what are we... recording like two minutes ago. <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> So, uh, I, I don't have any stories this time, but oh, what I was singing to myself while I was watching this movie. Um, I was singing Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci gang. That's that guy from the hunger games. Transformers. The last night beauty and the beast and spotlight writer and director of big nights. Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci gang. Did you come up with that yourself or did no, you No, that's like, an SNL bit it? that is burned into my memory. I did what the same fuck? I did the same exact that? bit. Stanley Tucci popped up on Bojack Horseman and when Mike and I were recording what is this a crossover episode? I did the same exact thing because <laughs> whenever I see Stanley Tucci in my head, I see Pete Davidson and Sam oh, Rockwell no. walking doing a fucking parody of that that Gucci Gang song but it's Tucci gang and it's incredible. And at the end of the video, Stanley Tucci shows up and just goes Tooch. It's great. It's really good. I love Stanley Tucci, man. I miss when SNL was good. Yeah. I, <laughs> this he... wasn't when SNL was good, but it was, was a good. Was bit. he in this movie? Stanley Tucci. Yeah. He's in this movie. He's Erskine. He's Erskine. No, that's not. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs>
Motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> look it up, bud. It look, look it up. I'm it's sorry. To, I'm sorry to break the Tucci news to you. Tucci. <laughs> yes, it is. It's not yes, family it is. Tucci news. Yes, yeah, it is. No, no, I, I refuse. <laughs> well, you're gonna look at the wiki page anyway later, so you'll get to, you'll get to be proven wrong there. Tucci gained further acclaim and success success with films such as Burlesque, Easy A, Captain America: The First Avenger, Margin Call, The Hunger Games film series, Spotlight, Beauty and the Beast. I forgot he was in Easy A. Yeah. Shit. He's in. Who the fuck is he in Transformer? Uh, he was in the Last Night. He was Merlin, I think. Yeah, he was in Transformers like after I stopped watching those movies. Yeah, that movie so was I... awful. Oh, okay. See, I had okay. I had the names mixed up. I was thinking of John Totoro. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Because I don't even know who that is. Let me let me look him uh, up real quick. John Totoro is the the Sector Seven guy. Yeah. Simmons, or, right? Right? Isn't that his name in, in Transformers? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That guy. Okay. Seymour Simmons. And Carmine Falcone in the Batman. I still yeah, can't yeah. believe that's the same dude. I know. He's really good in the Batman. I was doing a group watch of the Batman with friends, and then they pointed out that that's the guy from Transformers, and I couldn't take him seriously for the rest of the rewatch. You know what? It, it you know was what? rough. Controversial opinion. John Turturro's also good in Transformers. He's the only one that knows what those movies are. I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, having fun when he was on screen. Yeah, and I think that's, like he gets it it's it's important for that kind of movie to have like levity that is genuinely enjoyable yeah he was some of the levity yeah. that was enjoyable yeah anyways fuck except for when he's climbing under the fucking balls of uh the big one <laughs> and two and he's like i am underneath the scrotum or whatever <laughs> i i i haven't seen that movie since i was 14 so no, it's I a do really terrible this. movie <laughs> yeah the last transformers i watched was uh the one with london nimoy as um who who was like uh, not Optimus uh, Prime, but um, the other one? Sentinel um, Prime. Sentinel, yeah, Prime. Sentinel Prime. Yeah. Boom. That is the yeah, last one I watched. I kind of like that movie. I think that movie's the best of the three. Dark of the Moon. Yeah, it's not great, but I think it's better than the other two. I think it might hold up on a rewatch, frankly, but I'm not know. curious to find out. That's our next podcast. I don't like, <laughs> no, I don't like the whole sure. business, the whole like business kind of side thing. Yeah, that's weird. And it's like. British girlfriend or whatever. Yeah, but it's got some good action scenes. Hey, April Fool's idea. We turn this into the Mattel Cinematic Universe podcast. <laughs> so like Cinematic we Universe. we cover the Barbie movie. Yo, we cover the Barbie girl fucking music video, G.I. Joe. We we hit some of that. Today some I was at lines. Walmart and I saw the snake eyes. Like, oh, I still haven't Blu-ray. seen that. I was like I, I was like, I forgot they made that movie. Yeah. They're gonna do like another one, right? And the other GI Joe movies have like, have like fucking Chan and Tatum. Yeah, some of them do, I think. Right? <laughs> the first two do. Yeah. Is he in both? Yeah, of them I, I think the, he's the main guy. I'm pretty sure oh. I remember like seeing an interview where he was like, "Yeah, I totally regret doing those movies. They fucking sucked, <laughs> dude." <laughs> it's really funny. Joseph Gordon Levitt was in the first one, and at the end of the first one, they revealed that he was Cobra Commander, and that was weird. <laughs> Really? What the like fuck? he becomes Cobra Commander at the end of the first one. Cuz it's hmm. the rise of Cobra. I That's weird. Uh, weird weird flex, but okay. Yeah, it's a bad movie. I never saw the second one. Yeah, the the only one of those movies that I've seen that I even got any kind of enjoyment out of was Battleship, just cuz it's so bad, it's funny. I've never seen Battleship. Rihanna's in it trying to act. Rihanna's that tells you a it. lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Liam Neeson's also in it for some fucking reason. I mean... That's the only thing I know about Battleship is that Rihanna's in it. Liam Neeson, you know. She is present. Yeah, he collected that paycheck, all right. Hold on. Liam Uh, Neeson is around frequently. I'm gonna double check. Um, Yo, the priest guy from Midnight Mass was in Battleship? What? That's crazy. Hamish Linklater plays uh, Father Paul in Midnight Mass. Uh... Netflix horror series by um Oh yeah, shit. Uh Mike Flanagan, who does those scary that. shows for Netflix. Yeah, but, like the Hill House. Yeah. But he's oh god, he's fucking incredible on Midnight Mass. He's so good. But I was like, Dude. he's on Battleship? 
<laughs> Dude, you know who else is in Battleship? Ew. There's two names here that are killing me. Alexander Skarsgård and Rami Malek. Okay, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> this cast is a little bit insane. Hmm. Anyways. <laughs> the Captain America, the first Avenger, everybody. Yeah. Okay, let's get into it. Let's uh <laughs> let's do our introductions here. Let me <clears throat> Sorry, I gotta make sure I fully swallowed M and M. 